Good day. I'm Ivor Benjamin. I'm a professor of medicine here at the Medical College of Wisconsin and a past president of the American Heart Association. And it's really my absolute delight and pleasure to have this conversation with Dr. Henrik Takmeyer, who is professor of medicine at the McGovern Medical School, University of Texas Sciences Center in Houston, Texas. Um, Dr. Tagmeyer needs no introduction to the broader cardiovascular community, but his lecture, his keynote lecture, all is in flux and cardiac metabolism in transition was highly anticipated and one of the highlights um, for today's um, BCBS um, meeting. Without uh, further ado, maybe I can just ask Dr. Tagmeyer to tell me a little bit about how did he become so interested to focus on cardiac metabolism? Heinrich? Thank you. Thank you very much for being so kind to introduce me. I think this is a wonderful opportunity for us to share some thoughts about uh, metabolism, which has been, uh, you know, in the background, really, of, of our thinking in clinical cardiology. Um, and uh, was once uh, at the center of really um, cardiovascular research in the 1950s. And uh, then as uh, things uh, became more and more molecular and basic research and more and more technical actually in clinical practice, um, metabolism sort of a, uh, uh, took a backseat for a while. But I, I think um, in order to understand the functioning of the heart, you need to understand uh, metabolism. Um, intermediary metabolism of, of energy providing substrates and the new thing that I will um, that I have, uh, I'm stressing in, I'm sorry, I'm stressing in my talk is the uh, trophic aspects of metabolism of heart, you know, stressed heart hypertrophies or it atrophies, and it um, remodels. All this is linked and tied to um, the metabolism of substrates that we rightfully called energy providing substrates, but they do much more. Metabolism does much, much more to the physiology of the heart. Some years ago, I think 20 years ago, so I uh, I've been invited to write an editorial for one of the large cardiology journals and and I called <laughs> metabolism the lost child of cardiology. Yeah. And that's certainly no longer the case. I think we we'll understand that um, the function of the heart and the metabolism, its metabolism are inextricably linked. And a, a coronary circulation is really uh, the supply system for the energy uh, of the heart, but also the supply system for the ever-changing structure and function of the heart in response to a variety of environmental stimuli. And uh, we'll mention that towards the end, the uh, COVID, the cytokine storm, and the uh, immunometabolism that is mm -hmm. moving rapidly now into the forefront. So exciting in new times, um, fueled and supported metabolism by the many exciting new uh, methodologies in molecular biology and our understanding 
and bridging really the central dogma on the one end and the physiology of the heart in between that central dogma and the physiology of the heart sits the network, the intricate network of intermediary metabolism. My, my uh, teacher and mentor Hans Krebs called metabolism biochemistry with a purpose. <laughs> and, uh, and the heart, it is the, the purpose is to pump, to pump blood, to provide the peripheral organs with nutrients and oxygen. And of course, without saying that the heart helps itself first, the, you know, the coronary arteries take off right as the blood leaves the heart. So it fuels itself. And no surprise, and, you know, it's being calculated that the amount of ATP that the heart needs in the course of a day, our human heart weighs about 300 grams, needs about six kilograms of ATP. And that needs to be made all the time because the um, store, storage capacity for ATP would not support the, the heart beats or more than 10 or 15 beats. As we know, you know, from myocardial ischemia, myocardial infarction, mm -hmm. that is uh, blatantly, blatantly apparent to us. So the fuel metabolism is an important component of physiology. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, just to uh, play on the word energy, it takes a lot of energy to be a triple threat. And by that, I mean, you've been a distinguished clinician, you are an outstanding physician scientist, and of course, a teacher. So maybe um, you can expand a little bit more for our audience uh, but this whole idea that you have advanced called a small lab with big ideas. <laughs> and I want you to <laughs> spend some time talking about mentorship and, and what that means to you. Yeah, I can only um, speak about my own experience. And I grew up in, in Germany and I also went to medical school in Germany, and it was still the time after the Second World War. And we had brilliant, uh, brilliant teachers in physiology and in, in biochemistry. And so that really kindled in me the desire to do a project as a medical student and I was rather involved and um, um, bench work and experimental work and discovered something and that was important that you discover something early on and something unexpected. We investigated the effects of electrical um, the hyperpolarization, depolarization, and isolated uh, uh, papillary muscles, and we found something new, which was, um, that there was um, spontaneous rhythmicity in response to hyperpolarization, and eventually it led to the discovery of one of the um, potassium channels. And that really sparked a flame in, in me and um, opened, of course, also opportunities related for training and uh, training in, in America and uh, in Boston. And by the time I was ready to start a uh, microbiology fellowship in Boston, um, I, I, I was very lucky to be accepted into a program that integrated 
uh, clinical training and, and research training. And I started my first research project in the uh, laboratory of uh, Mike Lesh, who became my enthusiastic mentor and friend. He had a small lab and I modeled myself later on in my own career after after him, really, in a way. He inspired me greatly. He introduced me to a field of protein turnover in the heart. And, um, and radioisotope tracers, and uh, yeah, then intermediate metabolism. So by the time Mike left, I was able to stand on my own feet but and, and I had um, grant support and that was that was very um, good that led to a number of discoveries on amino acid metabolism especially succinate metabolism and then I wanted to uh, um, learn more more sophisticated techniques and I'd hope to learn the isolation of heart muscle cells and hope to learn about um, plant chain amino acid metabolism. So I contacted um, two or three labs, amongst them the, the lab of uh, Professor Krebs, Hans Krebs of the Krebs cycle in Oxford, who, uh, following his retirement from the chair of biochemistry at Oxford here, um, led his own research group, his own lab in the uh, metabolic research laboratory at the uh, uh, Radcliffe Infirmary in in Oxford. And uh, I, I never heard, I never received an answer for six months or so on my inquiry, but then suddenly uh, it was a telephone call. I was coming home from work in the in the evening. My wife told me that oh, Professor Krebs has called you. He's at the airport and would like to meet you tomorrow morning. So, so, so that really started your journey down. Look, you know, we only have a few minutes left. Uh, maybe I can have you, Dr. Takmeyer, tell me a little bit more. You know, obviously we're having BCVS uh, 2020 during the time of uh, the COVID pandemic. And yeah. we've had to have, um, of course, uh, this meeting uh, being, um, you know, being held virtually. Um, I want you to perhaps um, just make a few closing words around um, COVID and uh, how scientifically you see your own work um, and its relevance. Yeah. Thank you for asking this question. This is a question, of course, we have asked ourselves. And uh, one of my, my clinical fellows is actively involved in a research project on COVID and the heart. The, um, the challenge is uh, to see the broad perspective and the broad concept. Uh, Metabolism is, uh, uh, the heart is the first responder to any environmental stresses. And these environmental stresses include, of course, hemodynamic uh, stress, neurohumoral stresses, and uh, ischemic stresses, and immunologic stresses. And under the, this broad topic of immunologic stresses, there are, there's the crosstalk of macrophages and lymphocytes of the heart muscle cell that, that uh, yeah, it yeah, affects cardiac metabolism. But there are many other aspects that affect the cardiomyocyte and uh, metabolism um, of the uh, the metabolic responses of the heart immediately that potentially can be um, imaged and potentially can lead to interventions because it's our hypothesis that um, 
metabolic remodeling of the heart muscle cell initiates and precedes uh, the structural and functional remodeling. So the, the broad concept of immune stress um, is, um, uh, is a new challenge um, after, you know, we have spent decades uh, um, studying ischemic stress, studying um, hemodynamic stress, studying hypertrophy, studying heart failure. Now, the immune stress brings a, a whole new dimension to the um, uh, whole field of cardiac metabolism. I think um, there's a lot to be learned still, conceptually, but also experimentally. And we do have the tools to, to do it. It is just, I think, a matter of, of time. And, understanding. There was a big difference, right? So you know, um, either between knowing and understanding. Yeah. And that's our challenge. And that's a universal challenge. But I'm happy that metabolism is right in the middle of it. <laughs> well, you've uh, certainly been the, been the exemplar of that distinguished career that um, have increased our understanding uh, of cardiac metabolism. And so on behalf of the entire BCVS community, um, the, the chairs of uh, the BCVS conference, as well as of course, um, all of us um, in AHA leadership, let me express thanks and appreciation for your long-standing support of the American Heart Association. So again, congratulations on um, this distinguished career and this esteemed honor. So thank you so very much. I'm honored and really the honor goes to the people who stuck it out with me for so many years, including my family. There you go. Well said. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. All the best. Bye-bye.